Okay, creative designers, um, this particular video is different from the one I uploaded before because on this video, I'll be showing you guys two ways to make a ruche. Now, if you decide to use an elastic to make a ruche, this is the effect you will get. And when you decide to use a strap, this is the effect you will get. Now, the advantage of using the strap to create a ruche is you can adjust this to whatever you want. As you can see right now, I'm about to adjust the length to be longer so you can have a rouge skirt and also have just a normal street skirt with a flay effect on the side and that is what this video is all about showing you guys two ways to make a rouge i hope you like this video and don't forget to also subscribe if you're new let's get started this particular fabric i use is called a crepe for those of you that always ask and these are the tools and supplies you need so please look at them and make sure you have them right now let's go ahead and create this these are the body measurements needed i'm working with my round waist my hip points my round hip and the length of the skirt so make sure you have this measurement available on my fabric i have my fabric folded into two and the width is 20 inches how did i get 20 inches i divided my round hip measurements by four and then i added 9.5 inches to this you can decide to just add six or seven or eight inches is up to you but i added 9.5 now let's confirm this so this is my round hip divided by four 10.5 and then this is the allowance added to it 9.5 so i'll show you from here this is it 9.5 so that is why my width is 20 inches i hope you guys have confirmed this and let's move to the next stage for the length of my skirt um, i made it my short skirt length plus extra inches allowed so if you want to get that ruche enough ruche on your skirt make sure you make it your short skirt length times it by two or you can multiply it by three to get the ruche effect step one what is step one step one is for us to mark 0 0.5 inch down from our fabric now from the top of my fabric i will go down by 0 0.5 inch and you can decide to do one inch or half inch whatever suits you but make sure you leave allowance first before we start marking the vertical measurements and then indicate with a line separating the half inch from the rest of the fabric step two step two is for me to mark my hip point plus one inch now this is the new waistline the half inch we came down by is my new waistline so i'm going to place my tape on that line and come down by 11 inches my hip point is 10 inches plus one gives you 11. so please go ahead and add one inch and if you ask me why it's because this skirt we're about to recreate should be a high waist so you want the skirt to sit on your high waistline and not your low waist so make sure you add one inch to your hip point and indicate this on your fabric okay so this is my hip point and step three step three is for us to divide the round measurements by four so starting off with the round waist i'm going to divide my round waist by four and mark it on this line like on the half inch that we came down by that is where my waist will be sitting my waist measurement so divide your round waist by four and mark it on this line and then moving on to the next the next is the round hip divide your round hip by four and mark that down on your hip line step by step hope the beginners are getting this step by step so now that i have my waist measurement and my hip measurement i'll connect both points together You guys make sure you're marking all this on the right side of your fabric make sure it is the right side of your fabric step four step four is for us to mark the hip measurement on the length now remember we divided the round hip by four and marked here on the hip we're going to duplicate that on the length we're going to be marking what we have on the hip on the length so i'll confirm what i have on my hip and then i'll take the measurement down to the length and I'll mark that same measurement there. So I'm marking 10.5, which is my round hip divided by four on my length. So once I have that sorted out, I'll go ahead and connect my hip to the length. And there you have it. The skirt um, markings is done. 
Step five. Step five, we have to mark the same measurement we have right now on the other side of the fabric. So um, this part of the fabric that is on the cutting board, the cutting table, I'm going to flip it to the other side and mark this particular measurement on that side. And you guys will be finding out why, but we need to have the measurement on the side also. So I'll flip it and then I will go ahead and mark all measurements I have marked on the other side. Started off with a half inch. I'll come down by half inch just as we did on the other side. And this should all happen on the right side of your fabric. So please don't forget that. That is very important. You mark this measurement on the right side of your fabric. So I have the half inch here indicated. I'll go down by 11 inches for my hip point, just as we did on the other side. I'm marking my hip point 11 inches. And you guys know how we got 11 inches, right? I added one inch to my hip point, which is 10 plus 1 gives you 11. And then I'm indicating it right here. And make sure that your lines or your chalk or your marker, whatever you're using, is visible. Please make sure it's visible. Now I'll go ahead and divide my round waist by four and mark that down on the half an inch line. Remember, we did the same thing on the other side. We're just um, duplicating all measurements on this side. So I'll go ahead and divide my round hip by four and also mark that on my hip line. And the same thing I did, I'll connect both points together, the waist to the hip. And I'll go ahead and mark my hip measurement on the length just as we did on the other side. Um, I have been singing this and have been repeating almost all steps. So this should be really, really clear because we're just repeating the same step. So yeah, mark your hip measurement on the length and connect that to your hip to have this shape indicated on your fabric. So creative, you made it to step six and step six is for us to notch that half inch before the waistline. So I'm just going to turn this so it is close to me. I'm just bringing a waistline close to me. And I'm going to notch from where the waist stop, where my waist measurement stop. I'm just going to notch the rest out. Because that is where we'll be hemming and on the waist we'll be attaching the band. So I'm just going to separate it with a notch. And that is it for step 6. Now remember to make sure that all markings are done on the right side. This is just a reminder. And yes, let's move to the next step. Step seven. Step seven is for us to hem all edges. So these are the parts we are going to be hemming. Now, after the notch, we are going to go ahead and hem this part that's on the upper part of the fabric where the waistline is seated. After the waistline, we're going to hem there. We're going to hem the sides and we're going to hem the length. So practically all points are getting hemmed. And step Eight. Step 8 is for us to create the back piece and now the difference between the back piece and the front piece is the zip allowance. So I have my fabric folded into two and the first thing I'm going to do is mark 1.5 inch in for my zip. So from the folded edge of the fabric, I'm just going in by 1.5 and this is just going to be for my zip allowance. So I'm going to rule a line after indicating the 1.5. I'm just going to rule a straight line to differentiate that side of the fabric from the other side so this is my back piece and i have my zip allowance indicated already step nine step nine is for us to place the front piece after the zip allowance now this line is for the zip allowance so this is my front piece i'm just going to open it up but still folded into two and then i'm just going to place it after the zip allowance you can see that the front is not touching the zip side it's not touching from the zip side it's after the line created for the zip allowance so once i have that sorted out i'm just going to go ahead and trace out the length i'll trace out the sides and i'll also transfer my notch so okay let's just go step by step what i'm doing right now is tracing out the length and i'm, I'm going to move to the side and trace it out so it is the same the what i have on the front piece is what i have on the back piece so i'm just tracing it out and also now I'm just going to transfer my notch. So the notch I have after my waist measurement is what I'm transferring to the back piece.
step 10 step 10 is for us to adjust the zip allowance so this is how i always adjust my zip it's from the waist i'll be marking one inch out from after the line i created for the zip i'm just going to mark one inch out from that line this is happening on the back piece so i'll mark one inch out on the waist this is happening on the waist like i said and then i'll move to the hip i'm just going to uh, make sure that i bring out the line of the hip from the front to the back i'm just tracing it out on the back and from the back hip line i'll go down by five inches and on that five inches i'll be marking one inch down to the length and that is for the zip so i'll mark one inch here and then i'll keep marking this to the length of the skirt and now i'm just going to connect the one inch to the hip 1.5 you know on the hip i still have the 1.5 seated there so i'm just going to connect the 1.5 to the one inch below and now i'll connect the one inch from the waist to the 1.5 on the hip i hope you guys get that it's really easy just make sure you have 1.5 sitting on the hip and then you have one inch sitting on the waist and on the length one inch and just connect once i have all this sorted out i'll go ahead and cut out the excess that we are not using or i am not using i'll just cut it out and my back piece is ready so let's take this to the sewing machine and hem i'll be showing you guys what i do on the sewing machine so let's go sewing so step number one we are going to be hemming all edges on the front and on the back piece and this is how i do it now this is the half inch we already notched now i'm just going to fold this twice and hem making sure i leave out the waist measurements that is why we made that notch so you can see the waist measurement is left out and I'm, i just folded the rest in twice and i'm just going to hem and once I'm done hemming the top, I'll go to the side, I'll fold this in twice. And you will see me do that. I'll fold this in twice and I'll go ahead and hem. And yeah, I'll be doing the same thing on the back piece, but then I will show you guys every step. So this is what it should look like once you're done hemming all sides you should have only the waist parts like this and the rest hemmed so yeah so in step two we're going to be sewing the back piece together by one inch that's on the zip side so you guys remember that the back piece was splitted into two because of the zip we created the zip allowance so now to sew the back piece together the two back piece together we're going to be doing this by one inch and on the zip side so that is what i'm doing right now i'm just sewing off my zip allowance by one inch so all points from the waist down to the length i am joining that by just one inch and this is happening where on the zip side the part where we left the zip allowance and then we are just now we're just sewing in one inch so hope you've done that and let's move to the next step now step three of the sewing is for us to sew the front and the back piece together we're almost done guys just keep pushing this is my front piece as you can see the waist is left out other part is hemmed but the waist is left like this so what i would do is i would join my front piece and my back piece together see every part is hemmed the length the side is all hemmed and this is my back piece i have my zip side sewn in like this and we're going to be opening this later to attach the zip but yeah so every part is hemmed the top the sides the length what we need to do is place the front piece on the back piece wrong side facing wrong side and we are going to be sewing on the right side remember that is what we are doing for the skirt sewing on the right side so i'm just making sure the two waist points sit together and now i'm just going to go ahead and follow this line i created while marking my measurements i'm just going to follow the line that is why we marked on both sides. Now we have the lines on both sides and we're just going to follow this line to close our skirts. So yeah, we're going to follow the shape. And once we're done following the shape, we're going to create another second stitch. Now that second stitch, the purpose for that is for us to create a channel for the elastic. And I'm just going to be doing this by half an inch wide. So that is what I'm doing with my white chalk. I'm using my white chalk to indicate half an inch after the line I indicated. So this is me right now sewing the first stitch. 
which is the one we indicated while marking our measurements. This is the first line. And to be able to create the medium for the elastic of our straps, I'm just going to go ahead and sew in the second stitch, which is the other line I created with my white chalk. And this is 0 0.5 inch um, after the first stitch. So you can see that I am just going on on the same um, white chalk line and there, yeah, making sure I have 0 0.5 inch allowance between the first stitch and the second stitch. So this is what you should have once you're done with that process. We already have the channel created and now moving on to the step four, we are going to attach the band. So this is my band and this is how I always create my band. I cut out width of fabric that is 5 inches wide or long, whichever you want to say. And then I iron in 0 0.5 inch on the up and then on the down of the fabric. You can see it all ironed in. And once I was done doing that, I folded this into two and then I ironed that out. And then now I have 2 inches worth of band. So attaching my band, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the zip allowance first. So where my zip is going to be sitting, I'm just going to open that up. That's what I'm doing. I'm using my seam ripper for this. You can use your razor. You can use whatever tools that can just help you open up these parts. And make sure you stop where your zip is going to stop. Don't go any inch below or any inch... Um, above just make sure you stop exactly where you want your zip to stop and this is how i will be attaching my band i'm going to sew first from the wrong side of my skirt fabric so i'll place my band fabric right side facing the wrong side of my skirt fabric and i'll go ahead and sew on the half inch i folded in on the top part of the band so if you look closely you can see me sewing on the half an inch i ironed in before I'm just sewing on that and then I'll do this to the end from one end of the band to the other end so please take your time creative don't rush it and once you get to this part what you need to do after sewing in from the wrong side go ahead and flip your band to the right side of the fabric um, the skirt fabric and then top stitch so what I'm doing right now I am top stitching my band on the right side of the skirts and yeah that is how I always create my band for skirts for trousers for shorts anything that has band on it this is how i create it and i think this way is actually really easy so remember to just sew from the wrong side then flip to the right side and top stitch your band following the lines very very slow very carefully don't rush the process if you want your skirt to come out pretty take your time and then you're going to get beautiful results trust me Step five is for us to attach the zip. You guys, we're almost done. Now, attaching my zip, this is how I always do it. I just place the zip like this from the opening I already created. That, you know why we're about to attach the band? We open up the zip parts to where we want the zip to stop. And this is it. I'm just going to place my zip from the wrong side. And this is how I always sew it. So, I think this part is just self-explanatory. All you have to do is watch. And just see what i'm doing but if you still don't understand what i'm doing right here i have a detailed video on how to attach zip so yeah i'll be putting the link on this video so in case you're lost just watch that video and you're good so this is my zip being attached and you'll see the end result so this is how it looks from the right side i'm just going to cut out the extra and fold this in like this and yeah i'm just going to sew it to keep it in place and you guys this step is done we're done attaching the zip let's move on to creating the ruche step six is attaching the strap so this is how you make your straps and this is how you attach it to the skirt i have one inch of fabric and i folded it into the wrong side sewing in only half an inch so i have one inch wide of fabric i just fold it sew by half an inch on the wrong side and make sure this strap fabric is as long as you want if you want it really really long make sure you have that really really long and once i was done sewing this in what i'll do is flip it to the right side and i'm using my hand needle for this i'm just flipping it to the right side and you guys are going to see how it's going to look so this this is how you basically create a strap this is one of the ways you can create a strap and this is just like a very beginner friendly way to create a strap very easy so I'm just going to drag gently until I have the fabric on the right side and this is it. My strap is ready. 
all i have to do right now is pass the strap through those channels we created on the side of the skirt so we can get the flay effect so yeah this is what i'm doing i am passing it still using my hand needle i'm just gonna pass my strap through that channel that is why we created two stitch while sewing our skirts after the first stitch we went in with another stitch and now that has given us a medium for our strap or elastic so i'm just going to pass the strap through from the top to the end of the skirt and once i get to the end i'm just going to drag and now this is what you need after passing your strap through the medium on the top make sure you sew this to keep it in place I'm just going to go ahead and sew this more than two times to hold my strap at the top of the skirt so it doesn't move. So yeah, I've done that. Now I can be able to adjust my strap from the end of the skirt. I can make a ruche or I can decide to make it a long skirt. So yeah, that is how you get your strap into your medium. Very easy. And this is how it should look once you're done now this is an adjustable ruched skirt you can adjust it you can leave it like that you know any one you want just go ahead and do that but this is the effects you get once you use your strap to create the ruche as you can see i'm happy <laughs> wearing my skirt feeling myself and now i am adjusting it to a long skirt that is the advantage of using the strap to make your ruche so you guys let's go ahead and see how it feels to use an elastic for this so step seven is for us to attach the elastic and yes um, i'm just going to go ahead and pull out the straps i have in my skirt my skirt medium and now i'll bring out the elastic i'll be using and this is it this is the elastic this is a half inch elastic and before i pass my elastic through i'm just going to cut out the length i want that's how much i want so how much elastic i'll be using is 14 inches i'll be cutting out two of these because yeah you know it's two side of the skirt so i need two um two side of elastic and now i have my elastic what i'll do is use my safety pin to pass this through the medium you know that medium will just pass the strap through that same medium that is what i am doing right now i took out the strap so i can pass the elastics and you guys can see how it feels or how it looks to use an elastic so what i'm doing now is just passing my elastic through that medium and make sure you pin this at the top first before you pass it to the end And once i pass this to the end i'm just going to drag and drag until i get the effect i want and now to hold my elastic in place i have to sew this i have to sew this like twice um on the base and on the top of the skirt so i'm just going to hold the base and then hold the top so you guys if you remember very well while making the strap we we're only able to close the up parts and leave the down part so that we can adjust now for the elastic you don't have that option you have to hold the up and the down you have to sew in the top and the down so it doesn't move because this is an elastic any small mistake it goes off and then you're just done for you have to start the process all over again and creative minds that is how you can be able to create one for yourself you can decide to use the strap method or the elastic method please let me know in the comment section which of these you are going to be making and if you're a beginner please let me know in the comment section if this video is really really easy for you to follow and you guys i will be accepting suggestion of what you want me to do and how you want the tutorial to be for the beginners please let me know if you need anything to be added or removed let me know so i follow your suggestion and give you guys the content you deserve thank you guys for watching i hope you like the video i hope each and every one of the steps are easy for you to follow don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you're new on my channel be kind enough to subscribe and be kind enough to always leave comments and give this video a thumbs up thanks for watching i love you guys so much bye